Hello everyone and welcome to my quick, short and straight to the point tips and tricks guide to Rust. This is mostly for beginners, so if you are experienced in the game, this probably won't help you. If you do like this video, please like and subscribe as I have a lot more tutorials explaining some of the deeper aspects of the game at length here in the near future. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So upon first booting up the game, you will be presented with this menu where you have official, which is obviously just going to be the official Rust vanilla servers, no mods, plugins. Then you have community, which is going to be obviously self-explanatory community created servers. But there again, there is no mods, no plugins, no anything like that. And then finally you have modded, which again is pretty self-explanatory. There is tons of various mods, plugins. You can go through and read the description. They'll explain what they say. For now, we will join our server, which is a five times loot plus Instacraft. So there's going to be a lot of plugins and this is not going to be representative of official vanilla servers so keep that in mind as you watch this tutorial now once you finally load into the actual game you will wake up naked on the beach with nothing but a rock and a torch this rock is your most important item at this point your first goal is to go find some wood and some stone now while you're chopping wood you're gonna see this red X on the tree and you're gonna want to hit that as that is going to increase the amount of wood you get per hit now unfortunately this isn't minecraft and you can't just go up to any stone you see you're going to want to look for specific ores that look just like this they're all going to be shaped like this whether they're stone metal or sulfur and just like with the red x on the tree you're going to want to look for that shining little spot on the rock they're all going to have one they're kind of hard to see at night so it's mostly only when the sun is up during the day you're going to want to hit that and it's going to be the same thing as the x where you're going to be able to get more stone per hit sometimes you might have to jump on top of them and crouch same things with the trees they're pain in the butt to get sometimes now, once you have enough materials, you can go ahead and start crafting some tools. You're going to want to hit the tab button, go down to the tool section, and you're going to see a stone pickaxe and a stone hatchet. If you have enough, you can try and craft both of them, and the stone hatchet will increase the amount of wood you get, and the pickaxe obviously will do the same for the stone, sulfur, and metal as well. Another thing to look for early on is hemp fibers, which will also give you cloth. And if you spawn in the desert area where there doesn't seem to be any hemp fibers, you can always get cloth from cactuses as well. Anytime you harvest any type of plant or food, you're going to get some type of seeds for that, which you can then go and plant. And it, there is a very in-depth farming system, which I won't talk about in this video. I'll talk about it in a later video. As I mentioned earlier, once you have enough wood and cloth, you can make yourself a hunting bow and then if you have enough stone and wood, you can make arrows to go along with it. Another early weapon you can make is the wooden spear, which is very useful. Now, the next thing you're obviously going to want to do is make a little base to defend yourself from. In order to do that, you're going to have to make a building plan, which looks like this little blueprint here. You're going to need 20 cloth to make that. And then you go ahead and make yourself a hammer as well. So that way you can improve your walls and exterior. Now, once you have those made, you can hold right on your mouse and that'll bring up your building wheel. And as you can see, you have foundations, walls, roofs, floors, half walls, doorways, all sorts of things. Right now, we're just going to focus on the foundations. And as you can see, we have a triangular and a square foundation. Now, you can keep going as big as you want, but we'll just start with a little two by one here just to demonstrate. Next, we're gonna wanna create the walls. So you're gonna, again, right click, go down to the walls, fill in every space except for one, and that's where you're gonna wanna go down and create a doorway. And we have to make the roof too, can't forget about that. And you have a couple different kinds of roofs, but instead of the actual roof that says a hat for your home, we're just gonna go with the floor. That way, if we want to expand and build up to a second or build a higher base, we can continue that. Whenever you're building, you always want to think about future expansions and how else you're going to want to build things around your base. Oh look, it seems as though a local has stumbled upon our base. We better hurry up and get a door in before he tries to get in. To build a door and a lock, you're going to want to hit the tab button again and go to crafting and then go to the wooden door and the lock and you can have the door facing inwards or going outwards and then you, once you have the lock placed down you want to go to the actual lock and click lock next up we're going to want to take that hammer that we made earlier and make sure that we have more stone and more wood in our inventory and hold down right click and you can choose either upgraded wood or stone depending on how much materials you have at the time as you can see even just upgrading it to improved wood increases the health of the walls from 10 on the basic wood to 250 with improved wood while improving it to stone will increase the health of the walls to 500. Now, of course, you know we couldn't forget the most important part, the heart and soul of your base, 
your tool cabinet, sometimes known as the TC is short. This is where you're going to store all of your materials and is where you're going to stop your base from decaying as you're going to need the certain amount of required materials to keep your base from decaying. You will then need to authorize yourself on this TC before you can make any changes to the building. Anyone not authorized on the TC will not be able to build or make any changes to the building at all. I recommend putting this in a very secure, tough to get to location to protect it from potential raiders. Also, don't forget to put a lock on your TC as that prevents any random person from being able to access it. And when you're playing with friends, if you want to create a team and be able to know where they're at at all times, go to tab down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, hit create team. When you're by your friend or teammate or whoever you want to invite, click E and that will send them an invite. And once they join up, you will see their name in green in the bottom left hand corner. Now, after all that hard work, it appears as though I am starving from doing all of that building. So now we have to go out and do some hunting to get some food. Animals can spawn in almost anywhere on the map. A good indicator though is usually along the shorelines, they tend to always spawn there, especially some of the hogs. Now once you have found and killed your prey, you're going to want to take your pickaxe and start whacking at that thing and get all the materials that you can get. You're going to get some meat, you're going to get some bone fragments, some leather, some cloth, all of that depending on which type of animal you get. And before you're finished hacking at that animal and getting all those goods off of it. Once you have enough bone fragments, you wanna go and make a bone knife and start use that to finish taking all the materials because a bone knife will yield the most materials off of dead animals. Now at this point, I'm almost dead. I'm starving, it's getting night, I'm about to be freezing. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get us something to warm us up as well as cook this food. So we're gonna go ahead and make a campfire, which you just need wood for. You can place it down anywhere you want, but make sure you are not standing right over top of it when you place it down, otherwise you will burn yourself. There will be a little bit of wood in there to start you're gonna want to go ahead and throw that meat right in there and it's gonna go ahead and cook it for you it'll pop up as soon as it's done it's showing cooked meat also as I mentioned earlier cold and heat are a very real thing in this game so at night if you're not wearing any clothes it will get cold so again standing by this campfire will warm you up as you can see there is a comfort level of 75% which will increase your health slowly as well too now once that meat is done cooking you want to go ahead and put that in your inventory go ahead and click on it and then click eat and keep eating it until your hunger and health both go up as much as you desire also as I can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier you're always going to want to make a sleeping bag immediately and place that down as soon as you have your base that way if you do die during the process or while you're away from your base you will always have a respawn point you can go ahead and rename this whatever you like especially if you have multiple bags that way you can keep track of which is which and where they are on the map once you have a small base made and some of the basics out of the way you're going to want to start looking for some more materials such as scrap and fuel to get started on a furnace and other things like a workbench and a research table which i will get into in the next video now in order to find scrap and fuel you can find them along the roads by hitting barrels and searching some of the boxes along the way you can also find them at different monuments along the map, which I will cover along with some of the workbenches and research tables in the next video. Now, once you have found enough fuel to make a furnace, you're gonna need 50 low grade fuel, 200 stone and 100 wood in order to make a furnace. You're gonna wanna craft that place that down and this works just as the campfire does where you put some wood in you're going to want to put your metal ore and your sulfur in there and this is going to cook it into metal fragments and actual sulfur that you'll be able to use later on to make explosives so thank you everybody for watching this video i really hope it helped you out a lot if it did please go ahead and subscribe and like as it really does help me out a lot and i will be having a lot more rust tutorials coming out here in the near future